Hey guys, Wild Ox Studios here. Forgive all of the the noise on the microphone. Um, I'm kind of wearing my headset over my my HMD. Um, today we're going to talk a little bit about some issues that are plaguing Unreal Engine 5.4.2 and uh, VR development. So primarily with shadow casting. So as you can see, I'm casting from the MetaQuest 3. Um, this is an application I've actually deployed to the headset and I'm also shadow casting with CSM shadows. Now, um, I'm going to put some stuff in the description because um, I've posted a shader fix for both desktop and mobile and I can actually confirm that standalone mobile shadow casting does work. Now there are some caveats to this. Apparently there are some other issues with the engine that's giving some people a bit of trouble. Um, whenever they're trying to get shadow casting to work. Um, now, CSM shadows are not gonna be pretty. Again, this is not a deferred renderer. This is forward rendering. Um, so, you know, lights can be fairly expensive. The mobile renderer only wants to cast lights from a single directional light. Um, stationary are movable, but I would, per I would recommend doing stationary lights from a single directional and then not casting off of things like point lights and directional uh, lights. So, uh, or should I say spotlights. So keep it to, you know, stationary and try to keep a sing it to a single um, directional light like a sun and you should be pretty safe. Or if you're on an interior, then you can use spotlights. Um, but the most expensive light type is gonna be your point light and you're probably not gonna wanna cast from that at all. Um, yeah, deferred rendering is a desktop thing. If you guys are starting a project outside of the VR template, you're going to be using the default renderer from Unreal Engine 5. That's deferred rendering. And that pipeline is a completely different beast. Um, it uses virtual shadow maps. Uh, it uses Lumen. It uses Nanite. And I also have a video. Um, I can link that in the description that'll tell you how to get that going. But I have heard reports that VSM, virtual shadow mapping, is completely broken with instant stereo. Um, the shader fix that I posted only fixes shadow casting like this for the mobile pipeline for forward rendering. Um, and it also fixes forward rendering desktop shadow casting. Um, I do not yet have a fix for virtual shadow maps. Um, and I'm going to take the headset off now and we'll kind of go through this in the editor so I can show you. Um, forgive me for shuffling all of this stuff around. So I will cancel this cast and we'll go look at the um, device manager. This is fine. Let's go look at the locks. So as you can see here, shadow quality is being set to three, anti-aliasing quality set to three, and then all of this stuff is being set to one. So one of the problems with Unreal Engine 5 is that for whatever reason, um, it is detecting the Quest 3 uh, as a Quest 1. So if we change this log to profile, and I find out what is actually being detected here for device profile, you'll see log CSV profiler is Oculus Quest. So if Oculus Quest is being active as the profile when you, when you, when you package and build out, um, then obviously the profile settings for the Quest 3 are not gonna be applied. Um, it doesn't really matter though, because if we go to the engine and we look at the device profiles, you'll see that the Quest 3 if I was not to override anything, um, it's inheriting console variables. And it also shows you the parent is the Quest Pro. And these console variables, without me overriding them, the shadow quality would have been set to like a one or a zero. Um, so it's basically picking up that it's a low profile, uh, low, yeah, effect quality low for shadows, uh, basically. Um, I'm not seeing shadows in here, but 
anyway, it doesn't really matter. MetaQuest 3 is picking up from MetaQuest Pro, and then MetaQuest Pro, its parent is the Quest 2, and if we go to Quest 2, its parent is the Quest 1. And if we go look at the Quest 1, the if I don't override scalability and I look at inherited stuff, its shadow quality is going to be set to one. Um, so, yeah. What I did was I went into the default scalability group and I added a shadow quality override. And then I hit this save as default. And what that's going to do is it's going to create an entry in your directory for your project inside of the config folder called default device profiles um, before I knew what was happening I was messing with these guys and nothing was happening so I went to the log in the MetaQuest developer tool and I read it and I was like oh well the Oculus Quest is device profile that's being set so I went in and I set these variables there these these CVARs there and this allowed for shadows to work um, I then went to the Android folder in the config and I set the Android scalability to something more reasonable for the the cascade count and the resolution. And then also in your project, you're going to want to go to your directional light and you're going to want to make sure it's on stationary. And you're also going to want to make sure that your skylight is set to static and on your stationary light you're going to want to set a distance on your dynamic shadows and you're going to want to set your number of cascades to something reasonable two or one should be fine if you really want to push it you can go three but you're going to have to have a very very basic game on a standalone quest build to perform reasonably you know the other thing is you can do a movable directional light but i would recommend doing stationary just because of the cost um it means it bakes all of the stuff outside of the, the stationary uh, dynamic range. And you also get this nice little fade effect if you get too far. Uh, it cuts back on what it's shadow casting and will save you some performance. Um, so let's talk about project settings. On desktop forward rendering, you're going to want this instant stereo to be on. This is what saves you on draws um whenever you're when when your cpu is having to perform draw calls it can do this in an instanced way so you're not having to pay twice for everything that you're drawing on mobile it's called mobile multi-view and then the shaders that i'll have in the description i have a link to the forum where i've provided these um the ush file had an issue where it was doing an or statement instead of an and um there's probably still something going on there because if you have instant stereo enabled, even though it's desktop, it will cause you to have a solid black picture on the left hand eye whenever you deploy to your quest. If you untick this and enable multi view, you're going to be fine. If both of them are checked, you're going to have problems. Um, and I can confirm the same thing goes with desktop. If you're deploying to a desktop, you go, you're going to want instant stereo, but you're not going to want to have multi -mo uh, mobile multi-view checked. Um, and again, this is for forward rendering. If you're doing deferred rendering, your shadow maps, your shadow casting, let's go shadows, is going to be set to virtual shadow maps. By default, this is grayed out in forward rendering, um, and it just uses normal cascade shadow maps. Um, so if we go to forward, you'll see your mobile shading is set to forward by default. This is what your quest and everything runs standalone. Um, the desktop renderer is called the forward renderer, forward shading, and usually you'll see that this is ticked for the VR template by default. The shader fix that I posted fixes forward rendering shadow casting. Um, the left eye no longer does a weird thing. Uh, you know on the desktop version and as long as you have that multi view and that instant stereo checked correctly for the platform you're deploying to either desktop or mobile it'll also work there um, if you're in deferred you're gonna have VSM selected as your default sh shading method for shadow casting I would recommend you switch to CSM 
there's no reason to be in VR with VSM unless you're using Nanite. Um, and at this point, Nanite's just very, very, very expensive for VR projects, um, unless you're gonna just, you know, reproject all over the place. Um, but I do have a video, I'll link it in the description as well, that goes over AMD FSR and how to get 90 frames out of uh, Lumen um, in VR with an older version of Unreal Engine. But yeah, anyway, I just wanted to go over all of this and kind of like clear the stage on all of the confusion that's happening uh, that I see that's going on in the community uh, struggling to get shadow casting working in VR nowadays uh, with Unreal Engine 5. Um, to all of my Patreon members, uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Um, to all of the Wild Ox, Wild Ox Discord members, um, keep those recommendations coming and uh, happy developing. And until next time, toodles.